Today our topic is a knit fabric called ITY. We'll be going over what it is, what it's made out of, the best styles for this fabric and the worst. And I've made a new garment using that fabric with a pattern for wovens, but it still works. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today is a fabric focused video. I do have quite a few of these on the channel that touch on different types of fabric. And I'm going into different types of knits now for a little while. I've made videos mainly about woven fabrics in the past. Well, now it's the turn of ITY. I get a lot of questions asking me what it is. I do mention it quite a bit. It is a fabric I use a fair amount in my sewing and I really like the garments, how they turn out and I'm showing you that and I mentioned the fabric so why not dive a little deeper about the fabric. ITY just stands for a longer name so you don't want to say the three words which is interlock twist yarn. So instead of saying all that amount of words, it's just called ITY. This one in the name, it says it's twist yarn that means that when the fibers are being weaved they're being twisted and that just gives the fabric a little bit more natural elasticity even if there's not much spandex content in there and the fibers used for this type of fabric are man-made it's polyester but different to other polyester types of materials that you can find this one's just different just because of the way it's weaved breathable so it's not a fabric that will make you really hot in the summer some of them can be quite matte when you look at them so there's no sheen to them and others have a tiny little bit of sheen and the drape of this type of fabric is amazing. You can find them in weights that are ranging from very light to light to medium. I have found them and I have touched them and I've worked with them. Most of these fabrics will have some elastane or spandex or lycra content in there. The most common blend that you'll see is 95% polyester, 5% spandex. And I've just recently ordered some in solids because all the ones I have are prints that has 7.5% lycra. So it has a little bit more elastane. And this amount of elastane or lycra or spandex, I'm saying all the words because you might see them, just depends on where you live. That is going to give this fabric a nice amount of stretch that is horizontal and vertical in most cases. In most of the cases, I would say the stretch is more horizontal from selvage to selvage and vertical it's a little bit less and I've also worked with some that don't have barely any vertical stretch it's just all the way from selvage to selvage so just horizontal tends to appear a little dressier than say a cotton lycra for example that tends to look a little bit more informal same as the rayon spandex it's just the way that the fabric looks what I like about the fabric is that it's pretty much wrinkle resistant you know it can wrinkle of course but once you've sewn it you've set the seams and pressed them really well they'll probably stay nice and pressed for a very long time you can chuck them in a suitcase and go they can get wet and they can dry very quickly they take very little space in your suitcase so I think they're really good travel types of garments if you make them out of this fabric it's pretty much resistant to peeling compared to other types of knits so it's really rare that you'll get those little spots on your fabric like that you have to get a machine and and, like shave them away it's not a common thing to occur and all the beautiful prints and the solids that you get with this type of material are gonna last a pretty long time it's not a type of fabric that will bleed and start fading like rayon spandex for example with rayon spandex I'm really careful when I wash and I know a garment is not gonna have that nice vibrant print and intensity of color for a very long time you can throw it in the wash like normal you don't have to have any special precautions about washing it you can put it in the dryer if you want if that's how you wash your things it's just really really easy to care for but there's annoying things about the fabric as well and most have to do not with wearing the garment or the garment itself it's actually about sewing and making the garment because most of these fabrics have a really slippery surface so everything is a little bit more time intense Intensive, you know when you want to cut your fabric it can take a little while longer just folding the fabric and getting the grain line correct and the selvage is nice and neat can take a little while longer because the fabric just wants to shift and also when you're sewing you're pinning along and the layers don't stay together and they tend to move so you might have that situation also when you're going to start sewing and doing your seams on the sewing machine either the fabric might want to just get into the metal plate and the machine want to eat it but of course with all those things that you encounter with sewing there is always some solutions one of the most basic things that I suggest when you're cutting is never to let the fabric hang off your cutting surface I have a medium-sized table I can fit my whole fabric folded if it's a 58 inch wide fabric folded for example but sometimes the length of the fabric I'm using is quite long and it wants to just hang off don't do that because the weight of the fabric is going to stretch it and it's just going to deform your piece if you're trying to cut it with the fabric just hanging off so make sure 
you cut it in sections bit by bit piece by piece and keep all your fabric on the table the other thing I would suggest you use a rotary cutter it's gonna be so much easier to just cut it with that blade instead of with the scissors similar to like cutting chiffon or rayon fabric you're just gonna lift it and the fabric's gonna start moving and you're not gonna get nice even cut it's not easy like cutting cotton spandex or a ponte roma that's a type of stable fabric where you're cutting with the scissors is no issue here a rotary blade is going to do the trick if your machine wants to eat fabric i just have a really simple trick which is not back tucking when you start your seam and just pulling on the threads and then starting to sew that usually solves the problem of the fabric wanting to go into the metal plate otherwise if you don't want to do that you can put a little bit of a tissue paper underneath when you start and then just keep going about the fabric wanting to move around, I tend to use a lot of pins if it's just like a straight seam. I would never just put the layers in, hope for the best and not use pins. That's just something I would never do. And especially with this type of fabric, I'll use a lot of pins. I'm not a clip type of person. You'll never see me use clips or that weight there and it could just deform your piece. I'm just not a fan of clips. And the best thing for areas that need precision and if your fabric wants to curl a little bit on the ends is hand basting. I hand based on knits and for ITY, I will be very happy to hand baste an area so that the raw edges really stay together and that they don't move around. A jersey needle, a stretch needle is going to be the best because it is a neat fabric. I do have some ITY fabrics that are lighter than this and for those I would use this needle, the 70. But for this one, I think an 80 would be okay. I would not be happy to use 90, I think that's just too big of a needle for this type of knit. So I think 80 for this one would be okay. I'll be using a zigzag stitch and I want it to look almost flat. So that is is going to be my setting and then the stitch length is going to be about 2.5 and maybe for the binding it will be a 3 just because you have to go through more layers. It will look like a straight stitch and it will just allow the give so I can just pull it over my head comfortably. And polyester thread is going to work for everything, it's nice and durable. When there's an area of the garment that needs stabilization, tricot knee interfacing is the best option, not the same type of interfacing you would use for your woven projects. So there are the stretchy type that actually when fused onto the fabric just keep that same drape and flexibility of the garment, give it that structure in the area that you want, like a facing for example. I think garments with ITY, if you have a sleeve or flounce details or anything that's going to provide weight here coming down, you should stabilize that shoulder seam in some way. There are many ways to do that, but I don't think it's something you should skip. And because the fabric is fairly lightweight, it's super easy to put garments together just using the serger and just reserving some areas for the sewing machine in the areas that you need for precision, for example. But, you know, side seams, all of that can be done perfectly with the serger. I used a twin needle for hemming and don't really have an issue with that. If you have a cover stitch, that's fine. I don't like hemming which is with a straight stitch or using a zigzag stitch. I think that does not look very nice. I want to show you some from my collection. I believe I haven't shown these before. I found really nice geometric prints around here. I like the burgundy, the brown. This is a more autumnal print for me. And it's really light. You can see the drape is amazing. When you put this on your skin, it feels cool to touch. And this one has a nice amount of stretch horizontally. As you can see, it's about 50%. Vertically, I would say it's about 30%. It's a little bit less. I've had this next one for a very long time and this is a different one. It's the same type of material. It's just that this one only stretches from selvage to selvage, horizontal stretch. Look at the vertical stretch. It's just so little compared to the horizontal stretch. Look, I would say this is not more than 15% versus about 50 horizontally. I love the print. It's very nice and it's just so fluid. Sometimes you'll find some texture on it. So I'm sure you're not going to see the texture, but I don't know how the camera can do what the camera can do for me here. But in the print of the big hound's tooth, there are little textured areas there. So it's not completely flat. This is so nice. It's so gorgeous. I can't wait to make it. Look how drapey. So beautiful. This is one I purchased this summer and because of the print, I know it has to be something with only a few seams because who would want to match these type of prints? Yeah, it, it would be <laughs> quite labor intensive and it would really disturb me if these didn't match. So it would have to be a simple garment that just had side seams, something like that. Look how stretchy. Stretches beautiful and then less horizontally. You'll see that the vertical stretch is usually less than the horizontal stretch. Here is another geometric type of print that I found. This one I bought here in an online shop in Brazil. 
beautifully stretchy. This one actually stretches the same vertically. Look, the way I feel it is exactly the same in both directions. So those are just some. I have quite a few more. I just pulled out some of them to share and so that you can see how they look. Now about styles that work, I think anything that has a little bit of positive ease is going to work best. Of course it always has to fit this area really nicely. The Azalea top has this lovely feature on the center that drapes amazingly and I think ITY is perfect for it. That's the fabric I used here and it's really really pretty really drapey and it doesn't stick out or poke out because the fabric just lies and drapes close to the body really nicely. So because of the beautiful drape you want to show that off with styles that have features like gathers. I think the ITY is perfect for these light gathers that you have around here. The gathers aren't extreme, they're very light and it just makes these gathers sort of skim over the tummy here and I don't think it accentuates anything at all. So I really like that. Maybe a wide leg pant. You can also make bottoms. I think they do have to be wider, more voluminous in style and these are the Cleo culottes from Sinclair Patterns. Super drapey, super nice. This is my way of wearing like a midi skirt, but it's pants. I love them. And in the same way, this is the way I wear a maxi skirt look, but it's really wide palazzo pants from Pattern Emporium. Love that ITY. The feel of these is amazing. And this is the perfect knit fabric for a style like this. It has so much volume. I would not want to make palazzo pants in a knit other than this one, because I think it's the only one that will give me that flow that look and the, the lightness. A fit and flare dress is always really good. The way I get around the fitted bodice is by doing it in a double layer. So I'll just cut two bodices and put them wrong sides together. Here are a few examples of fit and flare dresses where the bodice is fitted and I've doubled up the bodice because the ITY was so lightweight. It feels more supportive and it's not gonna look as clingy. Another example is the Oasis dress. I also used ITY and lined the bodice. I finished the neckline with a heavier cotton spandex to match the weight of the two layers right there. My Marianne dress, I also lined it but only on the back because of the features that I had on the front. It wasn't possible to line the front but at least the back in a double lay is going to be good. And it's the same thing I did with this Olympia dress that I made my sister-in-law. So just the back is lined, the way the neckline lies on the front means lining the front is a little bit trickier. And yeah, you get the flowy skirt, you get the best of an ITY with the drape and the volume. But making it lined just looks better and less clingy than if you just did that in a single layer for a fitted style. I did the same thing and lined the bodice in this fitted maggot dress. I used a pleated skirt version, it has a lot of volume because ITY is so drapey and nice, it's not sticking out. I also finished the neckline here with a heavier cotton spandex just to match the weight of the two layers of my bodice in there. Here is another bodice, it's a wrap bodice. I also lined the back of this one to give it some more structure. The drape of this fabric is amazing. The volume of the skirt flows beautifully and it's just such a nice fabric for details like this and this wrap bodice and special details on the waist. I made this dress by mashing the Rockford Raglan tee with the dress of the Rhapsody and I just joined those together, I used ITY. I do have a single layer on the skirt but a double layer on the bodice and I think the feet and flare looks really good and feels really good on and it's the only way I would consider doing a fitted bodice in ITY. I would not do it without lining it at least the back if not the whole thing. The Yasmin from Sinclair Patterns this one has quite a few details a shaped waistband little pleats there's quite a lot going on a little time consuming but totally doable with ITY and the same with the violet dress from Sinclair Patterns it's got a ruched panel on the center front and a square neckline. The bodice for this dress is lined in the pattern instructions so that's really good. I didn't have to hack that, it was part of the pattern. The addresses that have a different type of neckline with straps, the bodices here are fully lined as well. I cut two layers and just put them wrong sides together and then just treated them as one. The skirt is nice and flowy and here is another version with a different print. Same lovely dress, love this one. The fabric is just perfect for the amount of volume of the skirt. So nice. The sherry dress doesn't have a fuller skirt but it has that draped feature with a tie on the side and I think ITY was perfect for it. It's not a bodycon style, it's not super fitted but I still have a little slip underneath just to create a second layer under there because the fabric is pretty light 
lightweight weight I wouldn't be happy to just wear it on its own. The same goes for this willow wrap dress where I hacked a straight skirt under that wrap bodice instead of the A-line skirt. I made it so it's not super super fitted but I do have a slip underneath just for that second layer and so that it's not so clingy and you don't see lines of your undergarments. This one doesn't have a very fitted bodice. There are princess seams for shaping but you do have some positive ease there. So for this one I don't really think you need to line anything. I think the single layer is okay and I love IT why for it because with these these panels they get wider and so you get this lovely volume at the bottom of the skirt and I think that it's really really pretty. If you had a pattern that had a puff sleeve or gathered details right here if you sewed that up with a cotton spandex for example that would turn out really puffy maybe that's what you want <laughs> but maybe that's not what you want so you can have those gathering details be super subtle and flowy if you use an ITY. The next two are styles that have puff sleeves or gathers on the sleeve cap and just a wider sleeve. This is Arlington and I made mine as a t-shirt as such. I used ITY and those gathers on the sleeve cap just look really discreet and beautiful, really delicate but not voluminous. And very similar to that is a Sloan sweater that I made as a t-shirt. I actually drafted my own puff sleeve for this one and used ITY to have gathers into that cuff there and on top of the sleeve cap and it looks really really delicate looks really nice. I think ITY is the only fabric I would use for a detail like this. This is the only cardigan I've ever made in ITY. It's a really light cover-up, a very light layer for my hot weather and I use the striking ITY and I have a really voluminous sleeve with gathers into a cuff and ITY is perfect for that. Details with volume, ITY is the way to go in my opinion. About flounces, I think a flounce at the bottom of a skirt on a dress or a skirt on its own is okay. On this one I did a hack where I added a flounce but only to the back skirt and the flounce is even so that's why I was happy to do it in this type of fabric. If it was an asymmetric flounce then I wouldn't. As a little flounce on the bottom of the skirt that's a lovely detail I love to add when I'm using ITY fabric because the drape is so beautiful. You know as long as it's even and you can hem it normally. If there's asymmetry then you might be able to see the wrong side of the fabric which is usually a lighter color and I think that looks really ugly. I think a top with a swing style would be perfect as well, something that has a little bit more volume. Swing styles are great with ITY because of the drape and this is an example, the Camila Cowell dress. Super voluminous but it doesn't stick out like other types of knits would that are more structured so that's perfect and I really love the swing style, so comfy to wear, relaxed. That's still fitted here but has more space if you make it with an ITY, it'll just fall naturally and drape beautifully closer to your body and you won't look all sticky outy like it can happen with more structured heavier knits. I think a cowl neckline on a knit can look really pretty as well or that extra volume is just going to drape beautifully. I mentioned the cowl neckline and the Camilla cow is one that I've made in ITY twice and it's really pretty, the drape is amazing and yeah super easy to sew but ITY is perfect perfect for this type of feature so that the neckline lies nicely and doesn't just poke out in a different way. Something that's super figure hugging and tight is not going to look good because because this is a lightweight fabric so I wouldn't be making bodycon fitted types of dresses with this or a really fitted t-shirt. Another garment I would not make with this is a legging for example, a really fitted sports legging that's not going to work with ITYs. It usually will not have the vertical stretch, it probably will have the horizontal stretch but it'll be so clingy and so uncomfortable. I wouldn't make bike shorts or any type of fitted pants, fitted anything. Now I want to apply some of the things that I talked about with showing you a make. I have made a Rhapsody blouse. This is a pattern from Love Notions that I think is one of the most popular patterns. It's a beautiful style designed for woven fabrics. It's got a yoke, it's got little gathers here on the shoulders, a beautiful neckline, it has a little V, some binding right there, a yoke at the back with an inverted pleat, curved shape of a hem, nice amount of room at the waist and hips, and then so many sleeve options, lots and lots. I've, ma I've made countless amounts of Rhapsody blouses, I've made dresses, I've used all sorts of woven fabrics from silk to chiffon, everything. <laughs> I do have one sneaky dress that I made in rayon spandex, that was in 2020. The Rhapsody blouse is actually the feature Friday pattern for today. I've made so many of these, I've done hacks, I've done facings in here instead of the binding, I've done so much and I have videos about all of that so there's quite a nice playlist about all my Rhapsodies, I'll leave that link down below as well as my affiliate link and don't forget to use my current code which is PINS10 to get an extra 10% off. 
The code changes every three months, so always check the description box to see the current code that's working. You can make it with a knit, and I like to keep all the original features there that the Rhapsody has, especially that neckline. I like to conserve that because I think it's one of the most beautiful features of the pattern. And this time I've used ITY. This is my ITY fabric. It's a hair heavier than other ITY fabrics I've used before. Nice and stretchy horizontally. Vertically it has a little bit less. I think vertically there's about 20% right there, but horizontally at least 50 or 60. So don't think you have to make really simple things with ITY. You can make things have a bit more detail. And there's just one special thing that's gonna make all the difference. I wanted to show you how I was able to make binding with ITY, even though it's a really slippery, hard to work with fabric. There's a way that you can transform that. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna finish this little V right there and the binding right here on my new Rhapsody blouse that I made with ITY. So let's see a small sewing segment in here. This is the long binding that I'm gonna use around the neckline and this is two inches right here by just a long length. I had to piece mine there. I'm gonna match that at the center back. And ITY won't really hold a good crease. So I'm just spraying it very generously with some spray starch. This is the one I have and it's getting pretty wet. And then I'm gonna use my iron without the steam settings on it. And as long as I get a faint crease, that will be helpful. I'm gonna fold it lengthwise, wrong sides together. With this type of knit, you can't really use high temperature settings either. So I'm just doing a medium setting. So I'm gonna do that all the way. And then once I've got that, I can see a little crease. Then I'm gonna fold these in again towards the center like this, and then like that. I'm gonna have a fold right to where I folded it before. It ends up being about half an inch and that's what I want. I just want it a little wider than this is the width that I like and that's how it's gonna be inside. It's stretchy, but I think the spray starch makes it really crisp and easier to work with than if you didn't spray anything at all, than if you didn't use anything. Actually, if I just tried to press this, it would give me a really weak type of fold and it wouldn't hold. So I think spray starch is key to making binding like this that's almost gonna act like a woven. It, it really changed this area compared to this other area. Here it's really floppy. I have a partially sewn Rhapsody in my ITY knit. Up to now, I've done the same techniques I would do with a woven. I have the two layers of the yoke. I did the burrito method. Here are the front gathers on your high chest area. At the back, I have a box pleat right there. So that's all done and my neckline is all fully ready to be bound. You know, if this was a woven, I would do what I've already shown on the channel with the woven bias tape. In this case, I do wanna keep this feature. I don't wanna get rid of it. You know, if you really wanted to make this super easy, I would just get rid of that feature, just round out the neckline and add a neckband or a binding. That would be the easiest way. But this is what I like the most about the Rhapsody and I wanna keep it. So I wanna keep the binding there. I wanna keep the binding around and the little ties. I wanna keep it all. And I've devised a way to make a tiny little V binding that's just going to be placed in there the easiest way. I did the same treatment to the fabric that you've already seen. Lots of spray starch. It's quite crisp, it's quite nice. <laughs> Changed a lot from the original feel of the fabric and I have all the folds done like this. And that is what I want to use in this area. This is how it's going to turn out. So you have that V right there and you also have the little seam in there. And the easiest way to do this is just slip your fabric in here, wrap the binding around until it's all neat and I just hand baste it and then top stitch it down and we call it a day. So to get this little V there is so, so easy. Let me show you. I've cut a piece of binding that I know is gonna be longer than what I need. So this is 12 inches long if you wanna be on the safe side. And all I'm gonna do is open up all these folds. We don't want them there, but we still have the crease marks. So we do need those to be nice and visible. And I'm just gonna fold this in half like this right sides together and I'm just gonna put a few pins there to hold this in place and now here I'm gonna do some drawing <laughs> okay here we have one crease line and here we have one, one crease line and this is gonna be the center of this V so I want to draw a 45 degree angle here and I'm eyeballing this this is a very small area you can definitely eyeball this and I'm doing this with my friction pen so from the center to this crease line right here and then from that center to that crease line right there so if you have a mini ruler go ahead and use one if I 
put a ruler this would be a 90 degree angle right there this there but from this point up to there it's 45 and it's 45 basically that's how it looks like there and then I want to keep doing the same thing from this crease line up to the edge so I'm going to end up with a little zigzag type of drawing right here and I'm keeping the same 90 degree angle right here and then over here look it just matches the line on the print as well so what we have here is a W basically this is the fold of the fabric you folded your binding in half like that the crease lines are really important so I think the starch spray was really really helpful even with a difficult fabric like ITY it made a difference and it's going to make this technique possible that is all you need and now I'm going to sew this straight stitch with a short stitch length and then turn it the other way around I'm going to have magically that little V there I'm using a 1.8 stitch length just to give me that accuracy with each stitch here I'm going to sew like one hair before that fold right there catch that fabric pivot and then go off to this other section of the W. With ITY sometimes when you just start on the edge the fabric wants to dive in and the machine wants to eat it so I really back tack there to avoid that. So here where I just left the threads I'm just going to knot it twice just to secure it. When I'm finishing the stitch I can usually back tack without the machine eating it up but that's just a particular thing you would have to figure out with your machine and your fabric. Okay so there we have our W seam. It looks really weird now but it'll make sense and what I'm going to do is trim right here. Trim over here. Now because I sewed right up to the fold I don't need to trim in there and, and get into that area so I can just trim off these lateral bits and then I want to trim inside this and get rid of some seam allowance as well. I'm leaving very little like an eighth of an inch. Remember this is a, a knit it's not the same as a woven I would never leave such small seam allowance on a woven because then it would just unravel so I'm just going to snip into that middle right there that's going to be the center of the V and now we're just going to follow our crease lines and just turn this all right sides out. I'm going to poke my hand in there I'm going to use my actual friction pen just to put it in here and make this as crisp as I can just gently and here we have this it looks weird but we still have to work on it so now looking at the wrong side this is where this crease has already been made so just follow it and you'll get that little V right there same as on this side and then basically you're just going to fold it all together like this and there is the V binding that I'm just going to slide over my fabric now choose the side that looks nicest I have different prints on each side so I'm going to choose this one as the nicer one okay so here is the little V of my Rhapsody I'm just going to keep it like that get my binding and just slide this in push this fabric inside and just wrap it around I'm going to have excess here that I can just trim away but what's important is that this in this area of the V I'm pushing the fabric in towards the binding and then my binding is wrapping around it I think it's going to look super neat I'm just going to tidy this up hold it all in place and then I'm going to hand baste and then I'm just going to top stitch on the edge trim away the excess and that'll be the end of the little V okay here is the little V section of the Rhapsody and I've tidied it up I've been to the iron pressed it again I've got hand basting holding all that binding down and it's neat on the inside, neat on the outside. I love this finish. I know it's extra work, but it'll be worth it. If you want to give it a go, I think it's a lot of fun. I really love this technique. I think it's super neat. And the only neat I would do this with would be ITY because it's lightweight and rayon spandex. There's no other neat I would want to do this technique with because it would just end up being bulky. For example, a Ponte, a cotton lycra, there is no way. It has to be a really lightweight neat for this to turn out not bulky and nice. That's why I've included this in a video about ITY knit. Okay, even though it's a small area I did take my time to sew slowly especially around this area and it's neat on the inside neat on the outside I really love how it turned out and now all I'm gonna do is just fold it right here where the V is 
So I'm right in the center of that. Just align them, align this neckline so I can trim off these in the same amount. So I don't wanna just trim these without them being totally symmetrical. So now I'm sure that everything's gonna be at the same level here on the top. I have my binding here. I'm gonna sew it in the exact same way I would sew it if it was a woven. I would just be stretching it slightly so that it's maybe a hair smaller than the neckline. You know, this is a stretchy fabric, but I won't be measuring percentages. I'll just do it by feel and just stretch slightly. You know, I like to sew my binding on the reverse. So I'm gonna put my binding, find the center of this one right here and place the binding to the wrong side of the blouse. I'm gonna sew on that crease right there and then flip it, wrap it around. And when I get to the outside, when I top stitch, I'll be on the right side of the blouse and I'll see the binding. I want to show you what I mean about stretching it a little bit. So here's my center back. Here is the seam of the yoke. You can see my neckline underneath and my ITY on the top and you can see it's slightly smaller, only slightly, barely have to stretch it for it to match. That's how I want it to be. I just want it to bring that extra tension right there from the seam of the yoke towards this side as well. This is what it would look like if I was just lining this up one to one. So I'm basically just gonna shorten it by about three eighths of an inch, just a little bit so that there's a little bit of tension right there. And that's how I'm gonna pin it and sew it. Now we have the blouse right sides out. The binding was sewn on the wrong side. So now when we flip the binding over towards the right side, this is what we can now top stitch, make sure it's covering the seam we've already done. And you know this process very well. I do the same thing with wovens. There's nothing different I'm doing here with the ITY. I'm doing the exact same thing. So hand baste that and then just top stitch it down. This is my gorgeous new Rhapsody blouse. I had a small amount left from making a wrap dress a few months ago, and I knew it was the right amount for some type of sleeveless top, and it was just the right amount for this one. So nice, I love it. it I love geometric prints, and I tend to find quite a few of them in ITY. This is a size extra large with a regular bust. I didn't size down, I just left it like it was because as I mentioned, you don't want tight fitting things with ITY. I just want it to have the volume that it has and the ease that it has. And it's just very pretty. There are the gathers, perfect for ITY. They're not gonna turn out bulky. I still have the double layer inside, two layers to do the burrito method. And I've done the inverted box pleat there. This is my yoke, although you could barely see because I managed to match these types of vertical features on the fabric. So I've got those things matching right there. The different thing I did with this one was even out the hem so it's straighter at the bottom. It doesn't have the big curve. And I did that just to make hemming the ITY easier. If it was curved, it would just be a little bit more time consuming, you know. And yeah, why not straighten it out? It's fine. I used binding for my armholes. This is the type of binding that you saw on the right side of the garment and then just wrap the seam allowance over and then catch it on the other side with a stitch in the ditch and you saw how I did my neckline binding it's so pretty and all that stiffness that the spray starch had given it while I was sewing is gone by now I've worn it it's been hanging it's all nice and soft like it was originally but just that spray starch made all the difference and it made working with this type of binding so easy you don't need to cut any type of binding for a knit on the bias. Don't do that. You ruin all the recovery of the elastane if you just cut across the fabric. So just cut it normal and just and then you just fold and work with it the same as you would if it was bias for woven. But this is a knit, right? <laughs> I loved sewing that little V. I think it's a really cool technique that's easy to do and it conserves this original design of the Rhapsody that I really love and is my favorite. I don't want to get rid of it. So all that extra time you saw hand basting, totally worth it. Why not make it in a neat? And ITY is perfect, perfect for it because it's so flowy, drapey, light, and it's going to take all these features of the gathers and the pleats really well. If I made this with a heavier structured fabric, this pleat would stick out at the back. 
the gathers would not look nice. <laughs> the double layer on the yoke would be bulky. The neckline would be bulky. So yeah, keeping it lightweight and floaty like this was a perfect match. Although it's not the original fabric recommended, it is possible, you know? This is my latest Rhapsody and I made it using an ITY knit. I love the print, I think it's really cute. This is a color scheme I would wear every day. I have all the original features of the Rhapsody and I made mine sleeveless. This is an extra large with a regular bust option. I didn't size down because it's a knit and you'll see the details up closer. <laughs> there you can see that the hem looks straighter. The original hem is curved and I've done it curved with my woven versions. I've made so many woven versions. This is my second knit version and I love how flowy how lightweight and the amount of ease that you have with a design like this the neckline is really pretty it's got the gathers there on the shoulders i've got the binding everything as per the original rhapsody the yoke at the back has a pleat and it's just so pretty there you can see the gathers i do have a double yoke or the burrito method the ties there tied up i did a different binding technique to achieve that v that only works with lightweight fabrics like ity you can see how to do that on my channel and i just love it i just love it so much it took barely any fabric at all it was only a small amount i had left from another project and i'm happy to have my newest favorite rhapsody all made up in a neat stretchy fresh cool what's not to love I hope this video was useful for you, for your fabric choices when you want to pair them to patterns. Remember the Rhapsody is only $5 today Friday. Find all the links down below. I have got countless content about it. You'll find all the links down there. And that's all from me. Have an amazing weekend. Bye.